So now we're moving on to the second leg of this stool, the fuels. And we're going to look at the fuels that are used by the vehicles. Most, almost all vehicles operate on petroleum and most petroleum is used for transportation. So as you see here, transportation accounts for about 86% of the oil used in California, 71% in the US, and about 50% in the world. So to the extent that there's a petroleum problem in the world, whether in terms of climate change, total use, it's really, it's really a transportation problem. And if we look at how that transportation energy is used, you see here that over half of the transportation fuel is used as gasoline. And gasoline is used in light duty vehicles mostly, meaning cars, pickup trucks, minivans, and SUVs. And then another 20 to 25% is diesel fuel used for large trucks and some medium truck duty trucks and the rest is used for jet fuel and other, uh, and, and the other fuel are some biofuels, ethanol made from corn, some natural gas used in trucks, uh, but most of it is petroleum and most of that is gasoline. So you, we hear very often about petroleum being phased out. Some people refer to it as peak oil demand. Well, here are some graphs, some forecasts that have been done by major forecasters. What you see is that most of them are still forecasting that oil use in the world will continue to increase in the future, even with the increasing efficiency of vehicles. And the main reason is, going back to one of the first slides is, there's a lot more vehicles being bought and used in the world. Those vehicles are mostly in China, India, and a few other countries. The United States is not seeing much growth in vehicles, nor is Europe, nor is Japan. So if we're going to bend the curve, then we really need to focus on this oil use and, and figure out how to bend that curve downward. There's some, one important fact we need to keep in mind, and that is the world is not running out of oil, it's not running out of fossil energy, contrary to what many of us heard for many years. In fact, there's vast amounts of fossil energy in the world in terms of natural gas, coal, oil, and all of these can be converted into gasoline and diesel relatively easily. And they, they will use more energy to do so, but they can be. So we are not going to run out of fossil energy. So as we go forward, we need to start thinking, how do we compare and examine all these different options for, to replace oil in our vehicles? One of the best ways of doing it, one of the very important analytical frameworks is something that's called life cycle analysis. Life cycle analysis says, we have to look at how the energy is used, not just in the vehicle, but all the way upstream in the refineries, in the oil wells, in the coal mines, uh, wherever that energy comes from, the corn fields. So here you see a schematic that for two pathways to, so that we can examine and analyze these life cycle emissions. And what you see, the first pathway is for petroleum. So we have oil that's extracted from the ground, there's energy that's used and therefore emissions. The, the oil is transported, goes to a refinery, Again, there's processing, more emissions, pipelines, there's energy used to move the oil in the pipelines, the de gasoline and diesel storage, uh, transport to the, to the gasoline stations, the service station, and the actual combustion. It turns out for petroleum that about 80% of all the energy used in the life cycle is in the vehicle from the combustion of the fuel in the vehicle, both cars and trucks. Below that, you see another pathway, and this is for a battery electric vehicle. And here it characterizes it as the electricity coming from coal. That is, in fact, the worst way to get the, the electricity because coal is, is very carbon dense. Uh, re using renewable energy would be much better. But this is just to schematically show that we want to take into account 
all of the energy, all of the emissions from when the coal is extracted all the way to the electric vehicle. And one of the important insights from this is that as we move to electric vehicles, all of the emissions are upstream. The, the electric vehicle does not emit, at least a battery electric vehicle, does not emit anything. It's zero emissions. So we need a whole new way of thinking about emissions from vehicles as we go forward. On this slide, we see a comparison of the life cycle emissions of a variety of different fuel and vehicle combinations. And so this is the final number. Now you see a range because there are many different ways of, of producing the fuel and the vehicle and the efficiency and the size of the vehicle and how the vehicles are used. But what you can see here is that at one extreme, if you use coal to make electricity for the electric vehicle, you can see that it's about the same or worse than gasoline on a life cycle basis, even though the vehicle itself is zero emissions. And then you go all the way to the other extreme where you use renewable energy to make either hydrogen or to make electricity, uh, even biofuels. And in that case, there's almost a complete elimination of greenhouse gases from the vehicles and the fuels when that happens. So what we've seen here in this second module is that in many ways, petroleum is an ideal fuel for vehicles. It's very compact and energy dense and portable, but it has one big downside, and that is it has a lot of carbon, which results in a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. And that's why we're focused on fuels and why we're focused on transitioning away from petroleum. But that transition is going to be difficult because right now we are almost totally dependent on oil to, to power our vehicles. And not only our vehicles, our planes and our ships as well. And so moving away from total dependence is, takes time and effort. And it's going to be especially difficult because as we make vehicles more efficient and as we get better as the oil industry gets better at extracting uh, shale oil and shale gas, the so-called fossil energy revolution, we're ending up with a lot of fossil energy available at relatively low cost. And because of efficiency of the vehicles and because we're going to be making more of them electric and, and hydrogen, the result is demand for petroleum is going to go down. And that means the price of oil will probably stay low. And the bad news for us, for transportation worried about bending the curve, is that now all of our alternative fuels and our efficiency are competing against very low priced oil. In fact, it's very likely that oil prices will never go above $100 a barrel uh, on, a, on a sustained basis into the future because of the, bene the improvements we're making in efficiency and alternatives. So the challenge is going to be difficult. It means that we're going to have even more attention being paid to policy and even more attention paid to consumer purchases and consumer behavior.